Listen closely. What if I told you that being broke is not a mistake, not a punishment, but a divine strategy? A move designed by God himself to shape you, to mold you, to set the stage for something far greater than you can imagine. Society has it all wrong. We've been taught that financial struggle means failure, that being broke is a sign of weakness. But what if I told you it's exactly the opposite? What if I told you that your lack is the mark of a chosen soul on the brink of a breakthrough? Understand this. God has allowed you to face financial hardship not to destroy you, but to elevate you. This struggle is no accident. It's a setup, his setup, to awaken your true purpose. I know the struggle is real. You might be lying awake at night, questioning why things seem to be falling apart when all you want is a break, a chance to breathe. But let me tell you this. God sees your struggle. He's not distant or oblivious to your pain. He's right there with you, in the trenches of your despair, turning your doubts into the seeds of your destiny. It's easy to feel isolated in your suffering, like the world is moving on while you're stuck in quicksand. But this feeling of lack, this sense of being overlooked, is precisely where God does his best work. It's where he shapes you into something extraordinary because when you have nothing, you're finally open to receive everything that he has for you. God's methods are not what we expect. He doesn't just give us a smooth path. He gives us the strength to walk the rocky road. He allows us to reach that breaking point, to feel that weight, because that's where true growth begins. It's in those moments of lack and limitation that your faith is stretched beyond its comfort zone and into its true potential. You might be tempted to compare your journey with others, wondering why they seem to have it all while you struggle just to make ends meet. But understand this, your journey is unique, divinely tailored to develop parts of you that success alone could never reach. God allows the soil of your soul to be broken so that new seeds of greatness can be planted. Throughout history, some of the most extraordinary stories began with nothing but ashes and dust, Think of those who had to start from zero, penniless, broken and cast aside by society, only to rise up as giants of faith and power. You stand among these warriors, this lineage of spiritual pioneers who were chosen not in their strength but in their most vulnerable state. God isn't looking for the rich in gold, he's looking for the rich in faith. In your financial struggle, he sees the potential to grow something that cannot be bought or sold. He is crafting in you a faith that is unshakable, a trust that is deep-rooted and immovable. Every trial is a test, every setback a setup for a comeback that will glorify him in ways you can't yet imagine. What you might see as delay, God sees as preparation. What you think of as denial is often divine timing at its finest. He's aligning things in the unseen realm, moving pieces into place, creating divine connections that will make sense when you look back at this season. Patience isn't just waiting. It's trusting in the character of God, even when you can't see his hand. So let go of the rush. Let go of the timeline you thought you needed to follow. God is not slow. He's thorough. He doesn't just want to bless you. He wants to build you. And sometimes that building happens best in the valley, where every step feels heavy, but every lesson learned is worth its weight in gold. Let's talk about something most people don't want to hear. Chastisement. God's discipline isn't a punishment, it's a sign of his divine love. It's the fire that purifies, the hammer that shapes the sword. He chastises those he loves to bring out the brilliance of their true selves, to mold them into vessels capable of holding his glory. Think about it. Why would a loving God let you go through financial hardship? Because he sees beyond your current struggle. He sees the greatness that lies dormant within you. He knows that without the refining fire of struggle, you'd never be ready to carry the mantle of your calling. It's in these moments of financial difficulty that your character is tested, your faith is strengthened, and your spirit is refined. This isn't just about money. It's about mastery. God is teaching you to master the storms of life, to find peace in chaos, and to trust him when the ground beneath you is shaking. He's not trying to break you. He's trying to build you. He's stripping away the superficial, the shallow reliance on what you can see, to anchor you deeper in what you cannot see, his promises. Remember, even the strongest steel has to be forged in fire, 
That's what your financial struggle is, a divine forge. It's where your doubts are burned away, where your weaknesses are turned into strengths, and where your dependency on anything but God is consumed in the flame. This is where true warriors are made, not in comfort, but in conflict. Chastisement is never easy, and it's not meant to be. It's meant to draw out the impurities, to challenge every lie you've believed about your own limitations. It's meant to reveal your true nature, not the one defined by your bank account, but the one defined by your unbreakable spirit and your unwavering faith. Look at the lives of those in the Bible who were chosen by God. Did he ever give them an easy path? No, he gave them tests that felt impossible, trials that seemed unbearable. He chastised them because he loved them, because he wanted to see them grow into their divine potential. You are no different. You are walking in the footsteps of giants. When you face hardship, when you feel like you're being disciplined by life itself, remember this. You are not being punished. You are being prepared. Every moment of chastisement is God's way of sharpening you, of honing your focus and deepening your trust in his purpose. This season is not meant to last forever, but the lessons you learn will. So embrace this process. Lean into the pain of growth, into the discomfort of stretching beyond your limits. God's hand is in this, guiding you, shaping you, loving you through every tear, every doubt and every struggle. He's not taking you to the brink of despair. He's taking you to the edge of breakthrough. Are you tired of being broke? Or are you just trying to be God's favorite character development project? Let's be real. God's got you in this season for a reason, but that doesn't mean you have to stay stuck forever. It's time to step into the obsidian inner order, the number one ascension nexus on the internet, powered by Astral Atom. This isn't just another program. It's the divine blueprint for those ready to turn their trials into triumphs. If you're ready to break free from the cycle and claim your abundance, this is your gateway, and we are ready to help you on our Patreon. Inside, you'll get exclusive access to the Modern Manifestation Mechanics Grimoire, the ultimate guide crafted specifically for chosen ones like you. This grimoire doesn't waste time. It gets straight to the heart of manifesting your destiny with no fluff and no gimmicks. Alongside this powerful resource, you'll find videos that are simply too raw and too real for YouTube, content that reveals the secrets of manifesting in ways the mainstream doesn't want you to know. This is uncensored, unfiltered knowledge meant to transform your life. And it doesn't stop there. With over 200 chosen ones already inside, you'll connect with a community that shares their victories, their struggles, and their strategies for manifesting abundance. These are people who understand the grind, who are walking the path with you, and who want to see you thrive. But the doors won't stay open forever. Spots are limited. The link to Patreon is in the description. If you're serious about leveling up, the time to act is now. God's choices have always defied human logic. He doesn't go for the strong, the wealthy, or the powerful. He goes for the ones who have been written off, the ones who are broke, the ones who are seemingly unqualified. And that's because God doesn't need your qualifications. He needs your willingness. When you're at your weakest, God is at his strongest. When you're stripped of everything you once leaned on, that's when you start to lean on him. God is looking for those who are so empty of the world that they can be filled with his spirit. He's looking for the hearts that have been shattered by disappointment because they are the ones that can be rebuilt by his grace. Financial hardship has a way of revealing who we truly are. It shows us the cracks in our faith, the places where we've relied more on money than on God. And in those moments, God is saying, I chose you precisely because you have nothing left to hold on to but me. He knows that in your poverty, his provision will be undeniable. God's glory shines brightest in your lack. When you rise from the ashes, when you turn your setbacks into comebacks, there's no mistaking that it was his hand that lifted you. He doesn't choose those who can make it on their own. He chooses those who need his strength to succeed, so that his name will be glorified. Think about it. Why would God choose David, a mere shepherd boy, to be king? Why would he call Moses, a fugitive in the wilderness, to lead a nation? Because God's power is perfected in weakness. 
He wants to demonstrate that his plans do not depend on human wealth or power, but on divine purpose and calling. Your financial struggle is stripping you of false securities, forcing you to confront where your true trust lies. Is it in your ability to hustle harder, or is it in God's ability to open doors no man can shut? He's taking you to a place where faith isn't just an option, it's a necessity, a lifeline, a foundation that cannot be shaken. God is setting the stage for something spectacular. He's making sure that when the breakthrough comes, you'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was all Him. This is why He doesn't choose the rich or the famous. He chooses the ones who are desperate for His touch, who have no choice but to rely on His grace. So if you feel unqualified, rejoice. If you're broke, praise God, because you are exactly where He wants you to be, empty of your own plans and full of His purpose. He has a habit of turning nobodies into somebodies, of making history with the overlooked and the underestimated. Moses was nothing more than a man running from his past when God called him from the burning bush. He had no wealth, no power, just a stutter and a shepherd's staff. Yet God saw a leader in him, a man who would confront Pharaoh and lead an entire nation to freedom. David was just a boy, tending sheep in the fields, overlooked by his own family. He wasn't the tallest, the strongest, or the most qualified by human standards. But God saw a king in that boy, a warrior who would defeat giants, both in battle and in his own life. Then there's Job, who lost everything he had, his wealth, his health, his family. His friends said it was because he had done something wrong, but Job knew his God. He held on to his faith when it made no sense to, and in the end, God restored to him more than he had ever lost. These stories are not just tales from a dusty old book. They are living proof that God delights in using the broke, the broken, and the unqualified. He turns the ashes of their lives into the beauty of His divine plan, making their stories testimonies of His incredible grace and power. Each of these individuals had every reason to give up, to think that their lack disqualified them from greatness. But God doesn't call the qualified, He qualifies the called, he takes the least likely candidates and turns them into legends because their dependence on Him is their greatest strength. You see, when you're at your lowest, that's when God's highest work begins. When you feel like you have nothing left to offer, that's when you're finally in the perfect position to receive what He has to give. Your brokenness is not a barrier to His blessing. It's the very thing that attracts His attention. So take heart in your financial struggle because you are in good company. You stand alongside Moses, David and Job, chosen not because they were rich or powerful, but because they were ready to be shaped by the hand of God. Their lack was not a curse, but a catalyst for transformation. Remember this, God has a history of turning the least into the greatest, the last into the first, and the broke into the blessed. Your story isn't over, it's just beginning. And like those who came before you, you too are being prepared for a purpose that will change not just your life, but the lives of countless others. Let's talk about the fire. The refining fire that burns away everything you thought you needed until all that's left is your true self. This fire of financial hardship is not meant to consume you, but to refine you. To burn away the impurities of doubt, fear and dependency on the material world. Every struggle, every tear, and every sleepless night has a purpose in this process. God uses these moments to shape you, to carve out the parts of you that are not meant to enter the next season of your life. It's in this fire that your character is built, that your resilience is strengthened, and that your faith is made unshakable. This isn't just a test of endurance, it's a test of faith. It's about trusting that even in your darkest hour, God is working in ways that you can't see. He's setting you apart, transforming you into a vessel that's capable of holding the abundant blessings that are coming your way. The fire is hot, but it's necessary to purify the gold within you. Look at the heroes of faith. Each one went through their own refining fire. Joseph went from a pit to a prison before he reached the palace. Esther was just an orphan before she became a queen. And let's not forget Jesus himself, who walked through suffering and betrayal on his way to resurrection and glory. You too are walking through that fire, not because you are being punished, but because you are being prepared. The world may see your lack as a sign of failure,
but God sees it as a sign of faith. He knows that in this furnace, you are being shaped into a weapon for his kingdom, a living testimony of what it means to rise from the ashes. When you emerge from this fire, you will not be the same person who went in. You will be stronger, wiser, and more aligned with his purpose. God is teaching you that true wealth is not found in a bank account. It's found in a heart that fully trusts him, even when all else seems lost. This kind of wealth can't be shaken by economic downturns, can't be stolen by thieves, and can't be eroded by time. It's eternal, unmovable, and deeply rooted in the spirit. Financial hardship strips away our reliance on ourselves and forces us to lean on the one thing that will never fail, God's provision. It's not just about the money. It's about your mindset, your soul's growth, your spiritual maturity. In your weakest moments, God's strength becomes your lifeline, showing you that his grace is sufficient, even when your resources are not. So when the fire burns, let it refine you. Don't resist the process. Embrace it. Let it transform you into the person God always knew you could be. You're not just surviving this hardship. You're being sanctified by it. You're being prepared to carry the weight of glory that is about to be poured into your life. And when you come out on the other side, you will be like pure gold, shining, valuable, and ready for the purpose God has designed for you. Imagine for a moment what true surrender looks like. It's not just giving up control. It's giving over control to the one who holds the entire universe in his hands. During times of financial struggle, surrender becomes your greatest act of faith, a declaration that you trust God more than your circumstances. Surrendering doesn't mean you stop trying. It means you stop striving. It means you let go of the anxiety that comes from trying to force things into existence and instead rest in the knowledge that God's plans for you are far greater than anything you could orchestrate on your own. It's saying, God, I trust you even when the bills are piling up and the bank account is empty. It's easy to have faith when things are going well, but true faith is tested in the fire of lack. This is where you discover the depth of your belief, where you learn to trust not just in God's power to provide, but in his timing to bring that provision when it's most needed. God's plan often requires patience, and patience isn't just waiting, it's how you wait. In this season of financial struggle, your great this battle may not be with your bank account, but with your own fear. Fear that you'll never get out of this hole. Fear that you've been abandoned. Fear that maybe you're not enough. But surrender turns fear into faith, worry into worship, and desperation into dependence on a power far greater than your own. The act of surrender is like planting a seed in the ground. You can't see the growth happening, but you trust that it will break through the soil in its due time. God is cultivating something inside you that is going to bear fruit, not just for a moment, but for a lifetime. He's using this period of lack to deepen your roots in his promises. Surrender means letting go of the outcome, even when it's unclear how it's all going to work out. It means believing that God's hand is still upon you, guiding you, providing for you, even in the silence. Miracles happen not in the striving, but in the surrender not in the stress, but in the stillness of knowing that he is God. When you finally let go, when you say, Lord, have your way, that's when he steps in. That's when he takes the pieces of your broken dreams and builds something beautiful. True surrender is not a sign of defeat. It's a signal to heaven that you're ready for God's next move. And remember, God's plan for your life is unfolding even now in the midst of your struggle. He's preparing you for a season of abundance, and it's going to be worth every moment of waiting, every tear shed, and every prayer whispered in the darkness. Trust him, not just with your present, but with your future, for his plans are always good. You've been bound by the chains of financial struggle for too long, and it's time for those chains to break. The very chains that have held you captive are about to become the testimony of your deliverance. Your financial struggle is not your end, it's the threshold of a new beginning. Transformation is on the horizon. The breakthrough you've been praying for is closer than you think. But here's the truth. God's timing is different from ours. He's orchestrating a series of events that will lead to your deliverance. And when it happens, it will be sudden, unexpected, and undeniable. Do not despise this waiting period. The longer the wait, the greater the blessing. God's delay is not his denial. 
it's his divine preparation. He's aligning people, places and opportunities to open the floodgates of heaven over your life. He's getting ready to pour out blessings that will not only meet your needs, but exceed your wildest expectations. Your financial struggle is not a punishment, but a setup for God's glory to be revealed in your life. It's the stage where he will display his power, where every eye will see that what you are about to receive could have only come from him. This breakthrough will not just lift you up, it will lift those around you as well. Victory in God's timing is sweeter than anything you could achieve on your own. When he moves, it will be like the breaking of dawn, sudden, unstoppable, and full of light. God is setting you free from the chains of limitation, lack, and fear. He's positioning you for a breakthrough that will redefine your future. You've been chosen for this journey, not to suffer in silence, but to rise up in power. Your lack does not disqualify you. It distinguishes you as one of God's chosen. He's about to turn your financial mess into a message of hope, your test into a testimony that will encourage many. The chains that once held you back will become the very evidence of God's miraculous power. He's taking your weakest point and turning it into the pinnacle of His glory. You are about to experience a shift that will propel you into a new level of abundance, one that will testify of God's faithfulness. So hold on, chosen one. Don't give up just before the breakthrough. The enemy's greatest fear is not your struggle. It's your success. It's the moment when you realize that what God has for you cannot be taken away by any force on earth. Break free, not just for your sake, but for the glory of the one who has called you by name. Your struggle is not a curse. It's a divine setup for a breakthrough that will glorify God like never before. Hold on, chosen one. Embrace your role in this divine plan. Trust in God's provision, trust in His timing, and walk boldly in your purpose.